Today we begin a new part of the Bible. We are beginning the letters. Uh, when was the last time you wrote someone a handwritten letter? Didn't type it, didn't send an email, didn't send a text. When was the last time you wrote a letter? I don't think many people are writing letters anymore. But in New Testament times, writing a letter in the days before phones and the internet, uh, writing a letter was the next best thing to being there. And thankfully for us, we have many letters that were written by some of the key figures in the early church that have been preserved through all this time. Of the 27 books in the New Testament, uh, the majority of them are in the form of a letter. So seven-ninths uh, of the New Testament is in the form of a letter. And these letters were initially written, most of them, uh, to either address problems, issues, or concerns requiring clarification. They were written to answer questions that these new Christian communities in Philippi or Corinth or Colossae had, uh, or they were a way of Paul explaining, or Peter or James or John, of more fully addressing and teaching core Christian beliefs. So the letter form is a very important form in the New Testament. And as I said, they often are responding to questions. And as we begin this section of the Bible, uh, we thought it might be an interesting idea that if you have a question that arises for you as you're going through a particular book of the Bible, we're starting with Romans today, uh, you can email me and uh, if we can, we'll see if we can either, even answer some of your questions before the week of recording is out on that particular book. So our first verse of the day comes from Paul's letter to the Romans. And again, in your Bible, uh, Paul's letters and the letters are arranged from the longest to the shortest. So each letter uh, will get a little bit shorter as we go. Uh, Paul's letter to the Romans is the longest, the weightiest, uh, probably the most influential of all his correspondence. It was written during the height of his missionary career, probably between the years 54 and 58 AD. And it conveys the full richness of his experience of Christ, as well as the full maturity of his thought uh, as far as our Christian beliefs. Our verse of the day comes from his introduction. It's chapter 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who has faith, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Uh, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the good news because it is the power of God for salvation for all, for Jew and for Greek. And here at the beginning of his letter to the Romans, uh, Paul is going to begin laying out how uniquely in Jesus Christ, God has offered a way of salvation that one doesn't have to be Jewish to be able to have it. You don't have to be a Gentile to have it. But this path is open to all who will believe and have faith. And we'll hear more about that as we move through Romans this week. I pray that you are not ashamed of the gospel, but rather that you take great comfort in the salvation that God offers to all through Jesus Christ. 